Hey guys, Keith here. June's back behind me. Two guys how to's. Uh, we're back fixing another thing as usual. So today we're actually in this little cubby hole here. You can't see it, but I'm back in here where the, the well pump is right there, submerged down in the ground. Probably about 35, 40 feet of one inch pipe. This is your, we call these the well troll, but this is your pressure tank. But as you guys always know, or maybe you don't, uh, on these particular pressure systems, the well, the water comes up, it goes into the gauge, uh, this, this T that goes into this, uh, shoot, the, the well troll is what we call them, but it's a pressurized tank. It actually holds air and that's what keeps up the pressure going to the house. It fills up, it's like a big balloon in there. And, keeps running up these pipes up into the house, keeping it fed. But you can see that they have a pressure gauge that averages about 40 to 60 PSI. And you can see what's left of this pressure gauge. It's just total junk. It fell apart when I took it apart here. Uh, we had an emergency, so we went ahead and broke it down. But this sits right here on this T. That'll sit up there like this. And your pressure relief valve will sit on here like this. And your wires will go into it. It'll actually be this way here. And the wires will go here, which I'm going to show you how to hook up. And then your pressure is, is either tightening or loosening this. And you can regulate it by looking at <clears throat> the gauge that's going to sit right there. So if you adjust this up, you can raise the gauge. If you lower the gauge, you'll watch the gauge go down. But most importantly, we turned off the well uh, breaker over at the panel. So all these wires are not hot anymore. Both sides coming in and going out. Or everything's good to go. And we're going to start uh, putting this thing back together. And uh, June's holding the brand new pressure gauge there. Excuse me, do you have the box for that? And uh, this particular gauge is, a, is a, a 40 to 60 PSI. They make them from 20 to 40, what was it? Uh, 40 to 60, 60 to something, I don't even remember. But this on average, 40 to 60 PSI is what you want. So they have multiple ones if you're at Lowe's, Home Depot, or whatever. We got the 40 to 60. It's $3 more, but it's where the, the well, properly pumping well should be, and we can adjust it between 40 PSI and 60. So June's got this. Uh, we've got the box, and on this one, you can see here, it says 40 to 60 right here. And they make another one. I think the other one was uh, 30 to 50, and the other one was 20 to 30 or something yeah, roundabouts like this that. The one. So this is the Square D. This is the bigger one, made by Pemp Control, NSF approved. Uh, it's a good unit for 33 bucks. I think this one we replaced it 20 years ago, maybe 15 years ago. So we're gonna run it on these particular switches. I'm not gonna bore you, but you can see it's got this little piece of copper pipe on the bottom here. It doesn't look like copper anymore, but it is copper. And this is the old one. So we're just gonna throw that thing out. And June's got the new one, and he's got uh, the piece of new copper pipe that's threaded on both ends. Uh, we're gonna use this Oatly Fast Tape, and we're gonna go ahead and just tape this thing up real quick. <clears throat> I can get it and show you. So this is the brand new uh, nipple that we've got that's gonna go down onto here, onto this area right here and it's gonna come up and hold that brand new pressure gauge as well as we've got another brand new. Do you have the other pressure gauge? And then we have the other brand new pressure gauge. You can see this one, what that thing looks like and it's, we're gonna screw it in there. And once again, we've got this tape with this Oatly tape too as well. Uh, I lost the other one, it fell somewhere, but the other gauge is beat down. So let's go ahead and just at least get something taped up and show you how to do that. And like I said, we're using the Oatly Fast Tape. It's gray and it's thicker. So uh, we've got the, the, what, the one nipple here. Did you tape this already, June? Yeah, I did. Okay, so we're just gonna run a couple pieces of tape around this thing. You always wanna go in the direction that you're gonna be winding it on, uh, screwing it down on, otherwise the threads will come back. So we're gonna get it like that. June already did this, I'm just gonna do it again. That way in 10 years from now, if we need to take it out, things should come out nice and easy. And uh, we're gonna screw this up onto the bottom of this brand new pressure gauge. So you're gonna just need a crescent wrench or something like that and a small pipe wrench or some pliers that's gonna get that, that decent enough tight. And I can hold something as well if you need me to. So I'm gonna hold one end of this. So June's gonna tighten it, doesn't even need me to do it. Once he gets that snugged up on there, he's not gonna kill it. He's just gonna tighten it on until 
he feels that it's, it's it's pretty good and we can check for leaks we're gonna when we juice this back up we are gonna check for leaks on it so Feels, it says that feels good. So uh, we're gonna go ahead and just take this new pressure release valve here and we're gonna just install it right back on this T. And you can see this is your this is your T. It comes up from the well water comes up, goes through the pressure release valve, and that's what's gonna let, allow this to go up and out of here and pump back into the house. So first of all, we're gonna screw this in here gently, make sure there's no dirt or debris, get that thing screwed down in there. Use that little crust wrench that you can have. It goes back up under here. There's that, that wrench head that's up underneath there that we showed you. I'm just gonna go ahead and tighten this down. Like I said, you're not gonna kill it. You're just gonna just snug it up. I want these electrical wires facing the front. So I want the wires facing the front there. Do you have that pipe wrench, June? Yeah, just real quick. I'm just going to go ahead and double check this this, this uh, pipe here. Felt like it went a little easy. We'll just get that in a little bit more. Give this back to June, and we're going to once again get these. I want the wires around in the front. So just like that should do, where my wires are going to come in and go out. And we're going to install this brand new pressure gauge. You can see this is 100 PSI. We're only going to be operating at about uh, 40, to, 40 to 60. You can see where it goes right there on the T. So some of them might, ears might not have it. Somebody might have capped it off. They're always handy to have. and. Um, once again, you have the crescent wrench. The crescent wrench is just going to go right there. And we tape this one up as well. And you just want to, you just want to snug it up. You don't want to kill it. You want to, you want to make sure it's tight, but you don't want to over tighten it. On these older pipes and this brass and this copper, things will break on you. So be gentle with it. It feels pretty good right there. It's starting to get pretty tight, and I don't want to take it around another round, another round, because uh, it might just not even might not come back for me. So we're going to set this here. You get this thing wired up. Basically, you're going to just take these. Uh, you got a Phillips head. This is your ground screw here. We're going to take this and loosen this up a little bit. If you want to hold this, hold that, and watch. What else do you have, June? That's it. Mm -hmm. Okay. So we're good. So we're going to take this rubber grommet, and all these wires are going to go through it. And we did take pictures before, even though we don't really need them. But take pictures of everything. This rubber grommet is going to go right inside this hole to fill it up. So I'm going to push that over top of these wires first. I'm going to bring all those wires through at one time and we're going to fill it in push that grommet in there that'll keep it a little bit more tight from the wires cutting on this hard metal it's not going to make it waterproof because it's not designed for that we're going to separate these out we've got your ground we've got a common those are going to go together these reds are going to go together and then on this side as well, same thing. This goes up to your your uh, uh, the starter capacitor for the well pump and goes down to that well. We're going to hook these wires up in there the same way, pull it on in. And remind, remember, uh, to remind yourself, <laughs> definitely turn the power off. You don't want to mess with this. Make sure you trip that breaker in the panel. And uh, if not, you're gonna stand it in this wet water. You're gonna get, you're gonna get torn up. You good? Still? Good. Okay. So we're gonna bring these up. We're gonna use the red, the black. The yellow is gonna be um, our ground. And you can see this particular yellow's got a nice crook in it. Well, this crook's gonna go around this grounding screw. I don't know if you guys can see that. This is your grounding screw. So we're gonna hit this right here like this. 
we're gonna go the direction of the screw. Since we're gonna tighten the screw this way, like this, I'm gonna wrap that wire around that particular direction. And I'm gonna leave about an inch out. That's gonna grab all of our other grounds. So once we get this like this, fight it real quick. Get that down in there. Push that up in. Open this nut a little bit more. Boom, like that. And we're gonna bring that, that's gonna be our grounding nut right there. We're gonna put our wire nut there. So we're gonna tighten that one down, get that one done. Get that one locked in nice and tight. It's got our little stub sticking out here. And that's gonna be our ground there. We're gonna take the ground, set that up in there, get this grommet back in here. That came out on me. And uh, you're pretty much just gonna go red, red. Loosen these up. Make sure you have a good screwdriver that's gonna loosen those things. This screwdriver might be a little fat. It's a little, little big. Yeah, it's a little big. Let me get another screwdriver. Okay guys, uh, we got a better screwdriver. You wanna make sure this screwdriver definitely fits these cheap <laughs> screws they got. They got them so tight, if, if you don't have the right size screwdriver, it's gonna break on you. If not, you can run just a, a flathead screwdriver. Will work also. So uh, we went ahead and just used a different Phillips head. We're gonna, we're gonna make sure we, we like the way that that works. So once again, going back to taking a picture, if you wanna see how the whole system looked, you can see the two red wires are on the left, the two black wires are on the right. Everything else goes down to this grounding screw. So I took a picture and uh, just to show you guys, it's beneficial to take the pictures and you can double check yourself. So we're gonna hook this up back to that same way there. And uh, let's do this here now. So we've got the two reds. And you wanna put them down on there. The way the screw winds this way, tight, if you put that, that on, uh, if you put the wire on that side, when you go to tighten it, it's gonna try to push it out. So put it on the left side, that way when you tighten it, it wants to spin it in. So we're gonna, the other one wasn't quite crimped, and I'm gonna see if we can get it on in there like that. Same way again. If not, you can hook them with a little pair of pliers, but you shouldn't have to. This particular thing, it's just, they don't make stuff like they used to. We're good there. Run this big fat one up in there. Oh, tighten them, but don't kill them. I'm gonna go ahead and just run this over here like this. And get these blacks in. So be one big fat black, one skinnier black. However yours is gonna set up, just make sure you take a picture of it first. And we're gonna fight with these grommets a little bit. Get them plugged back in there. Keep those wires from getting cut on that outside sharp housing. This is good and we've got the, the white and the ground with the ground. This yellow one on this side is the ground. So we're gonna tuck this wire back up in there a little bit. Keep it away from that switch. You don't want it popping that switch up. Don't give me much room in here. And we're gonna get that lined up and do the same thing with this white wire. Keep it away from the switch, but tuck them back in there. Sometimes you might need a pair of pliers. I don't want to like to use the pliers because you'll cut through the, the outside of the wire, the shielding on it. So we're gonna get all these lined back up, run this wire nut. That's all of our, all of our grounds in one. All right, we've got a little piece, pair of dinky pliers. Uh, we didn't bring in a ton of stuff because you don't really need a ton of stuff to do this, but I'm just gonna spin these back around. I'm gonna spin all these grounds together. That way when we put the wire nut on it, 
it's just going to cover them up, but they're pretty much going to be spun all, all together. This wire nut on there like so, that holds them together. We're going to gently push it up in there. And this has a cover for it too. And uh, you can see that brand new gauge, that brand new gauge there versus that ugly, nasty old gauge that was there. It's just night and day. And this thing over time will get beat up from well water. Well water has a lot of minerals in it and it does not like metal. You all right? Uh, metal. That's why you generally use brass or copper. And this comes with a nice new lid. And that lid's just gonna, that nut inside there is gonna screw right down on there. And these come preset. I'm not gonna mess with it. This thing comes preset factory. How, how much, uh, the more you screw this down on these, the more pressure you're gonna get. So we're gonna run them just, just regular right now. I'm not gonna mess with them. And uh, let's see if I can push some of this in here. Just a hair more before we turn this power on. Top, nice and neat. It looks brand new. This should just thumb tight, tighten pretty much. It'll line up. Let me give this back to June. Yeah, they don't make them like they used to. These new ones are cheap. It's a square D, but uh, it's not like the old square D stuff used to be. Good stuff. So dang cheap now. You want that to fit on there. It wasn't quite all the way down, so I'm gonna do that. And I'm just gonna finger tighten that. That cover's on there, nice and new. The wires are coming in. The grommet's good on that side. Valve uh, This valve here. Yeah, we're gonna shut that. Not over tighten it, but snug it down. And June wants to hit the breaker. We can uh, check this thing for leaks. It's on that left panel. So he's gonna fire this up. We're gonna see what pressure we have on that, that gauge. <clears throat> and if it's up around 40, 40 something, I'm gonna leave it alone. Excuse me? All right, he's firing it up. slowly rise just be patient watch it rise up and you can hear up in here in this well tank there's a big huge balloon in there it looks like a bladder and in that bladder it'll fill up probably hold about 30 gallons of water and that way the water just pushes down and up into the house over time so let's keep watching this gauge see where it maxes out when this pump kicks off that pump will quit making noise the good, good running well is they say 40 to 60, so the gauge is good for 100 PSI and the pressure gauge here, uh, uh, this pressure switch is good for, what was it, 40 to 60, so right there we're already at 50. We're at 60, it's a little too high. So it clicked off about 65 PSI, somewhere in there. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna back this thing down a little bit. And June goes ahead and trips that breaker again real quick. I'm gonna take this lid off and uh, we're just gonna break this thing down a little bit. You got the breaker off? All right. And we're just gonna go ahead and just do a, a, a twist or two on that thing. And we're gonna let this water out real quick out of this. And we're gonna so go ahead and hit the sink, hit the sink on there, June. Or turn the well pump back on and hit the sink and we're gonna check this pressure again. There you go. Go ahead and leave that, leave that, uh, leave that spigot open. And I can bleed it out here if I want a little bit. Yep, you got the well pump turned on. 
it's off. All right, good. Turn it back on. Now oh, you can turn the sink off. We're down to 50, so I want to. I want to see. I want to get it right about 60. All right, let's fire it up. It's on now. Okay. I'm gonna bleed this out. gets down to 40, it should turn on. Go ahead, turn your sink on too, here. So we're right at, at 42 PSI, and it kicked back on. You go ahead and turn your sink off, Jim, and we're right at 60, so we're good. It's turning on at 40, and it's turning off at 60, so we're good. So we're good, and I only took this nut back. I'm not going to touch it because I'll get electrocuted, but we only took that nut on the taller one of these two screws, the two uh, tensioners adjustments I only took I only backed that out I left you Lucy that maybe uh, a quarter turn if that so about a quarter turn is about a, a half psi so we're gonna get this on here get it snug down on on there nice finger tight mat gauge is holding strong still at an even it's a little under 60 but uh that's fine I think that'll be fine. And if I need to, we'll fine tune it later. But uh, they usually come pre-adjusted, so if you don't want to touch it, you don't have to. Whoops, shoot. Um, but if you want it, you know, if you want to fine tune it, you can. Normally they come, they come pre-adjusted at about up to about 60 psi, 65. That one was on 65. And that's whether that gauge is even super correct or not. So you can see where I was in this little crawl space here. Uh, it's not much, but it's actually a lot easier to work <laughs> versus a lot of other ones that we've done, and, and I'm sure some of the other houses are, are horrible, but we're good to go. Okay, guys, uh, and also I want to make sure I give you part number. They make these gauges. We got the gauge that's up to 100 PSI. They have another one that's up to 200 PSI on a regular uh, household well. 100 psi is, is overkill but that's that's the smallest one they make and this particular number is a 024 771 so if you need to order one on the internet and get it shipped if you don't have anything in town or whatever and it's just a pressure gauge 100 psi pressure gauge and it's the 024 771 and uh, i think this was maybe nine bucks you probably get one maybe cheaper a little bit cheaper online and the square d you can see it it's a square d and it's the, the 40 to 60 PSI one. They make them all different models, but an, a good working well pump should work and fluctuate between 40 click on, click off at 60. And this number here doesn't really have one, but the number that it does have, it's a 07217. So this is the square D 07217. It's the 40 to 60 PSI. And this was maybe $33, something like that at, at Lowe's. So get it, get you some, get it, get it done, save some money, we're out. We're out of here. Once again, subscribe, like, hopefully this helps you out. It's not a hard job, what, $33 in parts, a couple wrenches, turn the power off, get busy and do it and fix it the same day instead of paying $600 to that local plumber. I'm Keith, there's June, I'm June. Two Guys How To's, and uh, we're out. I'm not a pig, I'm a lawyer.